this is what the interview is, right? You end up talking and you bullshit. And that's what I think people like hearing is just regular people having conversations rather than like question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. It's right. like nice to just let it, let it breathe and talk about whatever comes up. This is a special presentation for the Believe in Pro Wrestling podcast. Here's Rick Uccino on the Believe Podcast Network. What is going on there, you guys? Rick Uccino here, SB Nation Believe Podcast Network. Busy month of July coming up right around the corner. SummerSlam in Nashville. But the event in Nashville may not necessarily be SummerSlam. It may be StarCast 5 back this year. All StarCast It's going to be there. Mick Foley, Soraya, formerly known as Paige, Kevin Nash, obviously Ric Flair making some headlines. But so is my guest at this time. You know her, you love her from the sessions. From the NHL Network, from everywhere, Sirius XM, formerly with WWE, Renee Paquette, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I am doing fantastic. I'm excited to get to talk to you today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk yeah. to me about StarCast and so many other things. Uh, you got to be excited for this. I know the fans are excited for this because they're going to get to see... They're going to get to see behind the scenes, like live in person, an episode of the sessions. But it's not only the fact that they get to see the sessions and get to see you do your thing in person. It's who you're talking with in a couple of a couple of days here in Nashville. We're getting the Talking Smack reunion yourself, Brian Danielson. That's got to be exciting for you to get to. Yeah, I'm so excited. Once I realized that it was Brian that I was going to be able I mean, I was so excited to go down to be part of StarCast anyways. Um, because I definitely had some like major FOMO when I didn't go and do anything as part of like WrestleMania week. Um, so I was very happy to, to be able to pop down, see familiar faces, get to hang out, see fans, all that good stuff. But yeah, and then you add the cherry on top of everything that I get to do an, an episode of the sessions with Brian Danielson. Uh, it just, it couldn't be cooler. Just like a reunion of the ages. And you look at all the things that have happened from when Talking Smack ended to him and I both leaving WWE to now him wrestling in Blackpool Combat Club with uh, John, with William Regal. Uh, it's so cool. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a lot to kind of dive into with him as well. Not not all great news with him right now, uh, yeah. unfortunately. So it'll be great to kind of kind of get to see him out, yeah. in, out in person here a little bit. We did get to yeah. see him on television to introduce uh, Claudio uh, Castanoli, yeah. which was uh, a wonderful addition to uh, to AEW and a perfect fit as well uh, in the, the Blackpool Combat Club. It's the best. Yeah. Did you know that he was coming in ahead of time or was that a surprise for you as well when he came in? It's all a surprise for me. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Uh, before we get any further here, I do got to thank our partners over at Bet Online. Continue number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. Get all the latest odds and news and developments on the NBA Summer League, Major League Baseball, fighting news, even next season's early NFL futures. Heck, you could probably bet on NHL free agency right now. If you put money on Goudreau signing with Columbus, you just made a ton of cash because nobody saw that one coming. Right? Honestly. <laughs> Head on over to the website. Use your mobile device. Sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. Bet online where the game starts. And Renee, you know, going back to the fans being excited about the Talking Smack reunion, you know, what is, just what does that say to you about that show and the fact that people still remember it they love the fact they got excited to the, that you two are going to be back together on this you know what does that that mean to you it's actually funny because i want to talk to brian about this because i obviously get asked about it a lot but i'm a broadcaster that was a show that i hosted with him of course that everybody loved but i wonder i don't i doubt he gets asked about it as much as i do or like what his feelings are in it. Cause I loved doing that show, but for him, it was definitely like a different point in his career. And he might not have the fond memories of doing the show that I do. <laughs> so I don't know, like I left out being able to have Brian as my co-host when we were doing it. I loved working with him. Um, there's something so special about working with someone. I mean, obviously you look at Brian, you look at all his accolades and everybody loves the guy. He's one of the yeah. best wrestlers in the entire world. Um, but he was at a time in his career too. And he was just kind of like, F it. Throwing shit against the wall. Like, we were saying things we shouldn't be saying. We were pushing the envelope. And that was the thing to me that was like so much fun that at my time, 
also like in my career with WWE, I was like, oh my God, and now I'm doing a show that like I really feel like I'm getting to be myself with WWE. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have very, very fond memories of doing that show as much as it was like this short lived thing. I love that people connected with it so much. Yeah. And I think that's, that's part of it. A lot of people loved it for everything that you just said, it pushed the envelope. It wasn't what we would typically see, uh, on WWE programming. And, you know, it boggles my mind that it was cut down the way that it was. And you've said this before, <laughs> Does it? I mean, it uh -huh. does, but it kind of doesn't. But yeah. I mean, still, when you've said that basically it's it before that it came down to it wasn't what Mr. McMahon wanted. It didn't meet his expectations. But you would think, though, that if the viewership was good and the fans were enjoying it, that would have been enough. I you Again, that, that's you the mind-boggling part to me there. I know. And it's the upsetting part, too, especially when, like, you know, the, the core group of people that were working on it, we were all just having such a good time. The feedback was great. And it felt like we were doing something different and something fresh. And I obviously that's something the fans were really craving at the time uh, was being able to have something like that where it is a peel behind the curtain, but like not too much. We're kind of in and out of characters and whatnot. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bummer that that show got canned and it's, um, you know, the show still lives on in some capacity, but it's obviously like significantly different yeah. than from when we started doing the show. And I'm sure the version that they have of it now is more what they were looking for, but I'm really glad that we got to just like really fuck around at the beginning. And make <laughs> <some shit up. laughs> uh, another show that was kind of short lived in my opinion was WWE backstage, you know, yeah, that, I gotta track record with that huh what's up with that hey you know what but they were it was still good right like it was still yeah. good there were a lot of circumstances extenuating circumstances sure. against that show that's true, that's true. I, I did love the concept of it kind of like a sunday nfl kickoff kind of thing but with with wwe do you think that 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 that's kind of studio concept could still work right now given the right channel Time slot, I think, is a big thing. And, sure. you know, obviously no yeah. pandemic. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I think absolutely it could. You know, we started doing that show and we were all so bright eyed and bushy tailed and like so excited to be doing this show. And we walk in this beautiful studio set that Fox had put together with us. And I can't say enough amazing things about the people over at Fox that, that were putting the show on for us and the cast and crew that we put together for this show. But yeah, you look at the circumstances of we get caught in a COVID era, just trying to like, like, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna keep this going? And unfortunately we were one of those shows that was so early on with Fox that we just, we got next. Um, but I do think that it could exist. And I do think it's finding that right formula. I don't know that what we were doing was that formula, but I think it's a thing that we could build upon and figure that out. You know, a show's not great in those first, what was it, yeah. six months or so? Whereas, like, you're figuring stuff out or find it, like, that was us figuring out, like, what our boundaries are. This isn't a talking smack. We're obviously still working with and for WWE. Um, so, you know, you're, you're giving them the show that they want while you're still trying to give the fans the show that they want. It can be a really, uh, really many shades of gray area to be working in. But I do think that there is something in there that would work and could be great. It just needs some time to figure out what that is. Right. And I think you can talk about saying you have a track record for, for shows, not lab, but I think it's, it's not just the talent. It's the, everything has to be right. It's like a recipe. Oh, yeah. If one thing's off, it throws everything out the window. Totally, totally. And that's where I think, you know, especially like nowadays you see so many people kind of, you know, going into business for themselves. And that's why podcasting and YouTubing is, has, yeah. has blown up where it is. Hell, that's why I launched this channel myself earlier back in, in January. I wanted to kind of yeah. take things into, into my own hands. Yeah. You know, how different do you think your career would be right now if, if, you know, being a YouTuber and, and podcasting hasn't, it, it didn't blow up the way that it currently has? Oh, I, yeah, it would be way different. I mean, the fact that I was able to, you know, of course I have everything just in terms of 
you know, in terms of my following, in terms of even being able to sit back and not have to get another like full job right away. Like I owe all that stuff to my time at WWE, of course. But if, you know, for me to be able to take, take some time and work on putting together this podcast, putting stuff on YouTube and have somewhere to put that stuff. And it is also giving something the time to do it. It's a consistency. And, and that really is a thing to me when I look at these other shows and shows that can be great in trying to figure out like, okay, like I even use like the Drew Barrymore show as like an example for this. Like that show came out and people were like, boo, we don't like it. We don't like it. It's like, guys, it's fucking Drew Barrymore and it's going to be great. Just let it get there. Like everyone relax. There's like this really scary knee jerk reaction when you're working with big networks that they want something to click right yeah. away. It just doesn't work like that. And it's really unfair, especially when you do have great talent and you've got these great chemistries and a great concept. It just takes a second sometimes for things to catch on. And that's why I love being able to have a podcast and you have the YouTube and you work on the consistency and you can build your audience as you're going. There's something just more organic about that. And it's, that stress free, you know, there obviously there's still like other stresses involved in that. It's, it's, and it's a lot of work. It's certainly a lot of work. It is not this like, Oh, just throw it up, whatever. It's like, no, right. there's a ton of work involved in it, but it's, it's definitely nice to be in the driver's seat on that and not have some exact breathing down your neck being like, Oh, what's going on with this segment? What's up with this? Blah, blah, blah. It's, it's definitely nice to just take a little bit of a breather on that. Yeah, corporate America really has uh, a way of just kind of kicking you in the nuts uh, yeah. in situations like that. And, yeah. you know, I've, I've been in radio for 14 years. I remember uh, hopping on to a, uh, a brand new launch station in Cincinnati. It was an all sports station, which Cincinnati already has like four all sports stations plus 700 WOW, which is basically an all sports station. Yeah, and they were like, "Don't worry, guys. We're gonna give you three years. You got plenty of time to grow and and build this thing. It's we know this isn't gonna be a success overnight." Nine months in, they called us all in and fired us. Like that was like completely, they just like boom dropped us. I'm like, no, screw this. I'm going to the station that's been around for a hundred years. They <laughs> honestly, I mean, you know, there's there's so many great things on either side of it, and there's downsides to both of them for sure. I mean, it's. You know, when you're on something that's really successful, and like that's the thing of like being a part of something like WWE, it's like it will always exist. It will always be there. It will always exist. There will always be like some certain same format, same fundamentals, all of those things. Um, and that's great. There's something so nice about that. And there's something that I think like viewers love about that. It's like just that comfort thing of knowing that it's there. But then, you know, trying to, Let's break out of that mold. Let's try something new. And then everyone always reverts back to the old thing anyways. But um, yeah, there's, there's pros and cons with both for sure. Yeah, I think, uh, and this is one thing that I've, I've found out as somebody who has recently launched a channel. It seems like everybody and their brother has like a wrestling show or a wrestling podcast these days. And the market yeah. is just so incredibly so saturated. Yeah. Like when I went out on my own, I'm like, well, I'll just launch a podcast. You know, like I had no idea there were that many podcasts out there. I'm like, okay, oh, cool. Wow. Now, now here's where, are you kind of surprised that it seems like there are as many wrestling podcasts as there are wrestling fans out there right now? <laughs> I, I mean, yes and no, because there's also just like that joke when someone's like, oh, I'm like, I even when I message him, like, will you come on my podcast? I feel like a nerd. It's like, oh, my God, who doesn't have a show? Who doesn't have this platform? Who's not trying to push stuff out through their social media mm -hmm. to podcasts and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a ton. There's so many people out there. And it's a tricky thing, too, because even for myself, like, obviously, I love wrestling, duh, and all of my friends are wrestlers, so it's great for me to be able to have those people come on my show and have these conversations and, like, interviews that I love and conversations that I'm, like, super proud of, but anytime I, like, dip my toe into another world, I'm like, hey, come check out this thing, too. Come check out this other person that's not a wrestler. They're like, no, thanks. It's really <laughs> hard to, like, get viewers to follow you into something that's not wrestling they just want the one thing and that's cool i like being able to provide that for you but i also i do have interests that aren't just wrestling yeah and and here's the thing right sometimes it's good to just do that for yourself because i feel like totally. you need a palate cleanser oh yes 
I'll say that to my producers sometimes. I'm like, all right, enough of the wrestling interviews for a second. We got to bring on some other people. And we really have been sprinkling in a lot more lately, just like other broadcasters, um, other entertainers, you know, all that stuff. It is definitely nice to, uh, yeah, just to pop your head above the surface for a second. Because, yeah, I mean, just the way I like to, like, for a while too, it's like you have on every single person that's been released and you look at this like list of all of these people, but then you're hitting on the same note over and over and over again. And, you know, not that those stories aren't important and I want to hear those people's stories, but at the, at the same time, you do kind of need a little bit of a breather. I think listeners need a, a breather. It's definitely nice to just pump the brakes for a second and be like, let's have on a sex therapist. <laughs> <laughs> let's lighten the load for a second. Yeah, uh, I, I had the opportunity like two weekends ago to to host extra innings for the Reds and just talk baseball for two hours. And I'm yeah. like, this team blows right now. Like, what more can you say about the Reds other than they suck? But it was so much fun yeah. to not like scream about, you know, a lack of female booking or, you know, something like that. I know. I get like, and we don't even talk like that much wrestling, but yeah, there's times that when we do, that's like, oh my gosh, I can't like, I, I don't, I also don't enjoy critiquing wrestling and talking about it in that way. I don't like doing it. I always walk away from it feeling weird and like, I just don't feel like that's my place to like critique things. I know all these people, I know the ins and outs of like the circumstances in which they're working that to, to try to pick that stuff apart feels like pointless and screaming into the abyss and like for what? Yeah. And, and there, and that's, that's where I try to kind of say, cause I'm kind of with you there. Like I, I, I trained for 18 months, but that by no way makes me an expert in any way, shape or form. I'm not one of these guys that I feel like I'm, I could be a Dave Meltzer and, and star rate matches. And I, I don't tend to do that. I was a theater guy. I tend to be a more story guy. So I kind of focus on the, on the yeah. storylines and, and stuff yeah. like that. That's more what I'll critique yeah. and, you know, try to do so in a constructive way. I will never be one of these guys that hops on here and says, so-and-so sucks and they need to be right. taken off TV or, there's so much of that toxic energy out in the world. No, we don't need that shit. We like, do not need it. We don't need it. My brain just doesn't even like think like that for the most part. So it's like, it just, but if I ever end up in a conversation like that, I'm like, Oh, I actually don't <laughs> like, this. I would like to like hit the eject button and like shoot myself through the roof. I don't like having this conversation. Or if you're on like, Oh, I'm sorry. My internet's cutting out. Like, I got, I gotta go. I, at, 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 just stand there and freeze oh, for like 10 seconds yeah. as you slowly <laughs> hit the X out. Uh, no, I, I, I totally, uh, I totally get that, but, yeah. uh, I, I do love, you know, getting to talk to really, really talented people. That's what yes. I love to do such as yourself. And you do an incredible job, you know, in that job, the market may be flooded right now because every these AEW stars and WWE stars and impact stars, they're everywhere. They're talking to the yeah. same people, you know, over and over again. So it's like, all right, Hey, cool. I get 15 minutes with Drew McIntyre. Oh, he's yeah. only done 18 million interviews this year, seven with me, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. so the market is flooded, but when I, I look at it, in my opinion, it's you and it's Ariel Hawani. You guys are oh, the thanks. top of the list. Nice company uh, to be in. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you guys kill it at, at what you do. And you guys are who I, I strive to be if and when I hopefully grow up one day. Um, and I know, and I know I'm not the only one. I'm not even close to the only one who, who feels that way because I see content creators like all the time, just kind of reaching out to you on social media and, you know, just, just trying to hope to pick your brain or just to say, thank you for inspiring them or thank you for, for being who you are. Just becoming that household name. Is that kind of something that's a little difficult for you to, to, to wrap your mind around that you kind of reach this point here? Yeah, it is because I just I don't I don't think about that and I definitely don't view myself as that. Like honestly, for the most like we were just talking before we hopped on here. I'm like, oh, I've got two interviews tomorrow. I've got to prep for that. Like once we're done here, and like your internet crapped out, so I started like put, writing out a few notes during that. But like if I'm not doing that, it's like I just finished giving my daughter a bath. I'm worried yeah. about if she's eating enough protein for the day. Did my dogs go for a walk? Did anyone grocery shop? Oh, this other thing needs to happen. Like. I am so in like real world regularness 
right now that like, I just, I don't, I just don't think like as much as like, I love my job and I love what I get to do. And I do feel like I've been able to, I just feel like I've hit a really good stride that I'm really happy with interview wise. Um, there's a lot of times that I have people on and I have these conversations that I end up thinking about like far after and far long after we have shut down and we've moved on. And I love that. Like I, I'll like message people. I'm like, holy shit. Like I did not know that thing about you or discovering something about someone. Like I, I always go back to my cash wheeler episode. Like I had him on and I had him on after I had on Dax Harwood and I knew with Dax what we were going to kind of get into because him and I had talked ahead of time. So I sort of knew what we were going to navigate with that. But then I had on cash after that. And I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to match the, the Dax interview? What are we going to do? And I really didn't know where we were going to go. And I really didn't know that much of his story. So once we started talking, I was like, oh my God, like I had no idea. And like literally for days after I was just like, thinking about him and thinking about like his life. <laughs> There's yes. something like really powerful about that. And I, I hope other people feel the same way too. It's, it's pretty cool. When you first started talking about that, I was like, you know what? I, I tend to think about interviews that I have, you know, days in it, but for me, it's more like, damn, I could have done that better. Or the worst thing in the world that happens is you think of a really great question after the interview yeah, is already that's over. It. That's it. There's so many times that I, even like I just, you know, I just had on uh, Butcher from AEW and oh, um, I I had all these questions written out for him. Then once we get off, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to ask him about the thing. Because I uh, often we do, once we start going, I don't look at my notes all that much. Like they're yeah. there and every now and then I will, depending on like what the pacing is of the interview, if it, kind of calls for it or not but yeah that happens to me all the time I end an interview I'm like how did you miss this thing that you meant to ask them about but I don't I I don't know I feel like I've been doing this for so long that like to dwell on missing something the, we'll have them on another time yeah we'll hit it then. it's all good so long that it like probably fuck something up <laughs> I was going to say I, that happens to me all the time but it's typically because I have like a 15 or 20 minute window like we haven't even gotten into like most of the stuff that I wanted to talk about here. And well, that's how it goes, right? Exactly. Right. You start talking about some other stuff and you're like, well, this is what the interview is, right? You end up talking and use bullshit. And that's what I think people like hearing is just regular people having conversations rather than like question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. It's right. like nice to just let it, let it breathe and talk about whatever comes up. Now you, you've gotten to this point, you, you just said you got this kind of style and flow down and, you know, um, you're, you're kind of in the zone, you know, kind of like your husband, how he's in the zone in the ring. You kind of reach that zone here with, with your career. Go We're really to, in the zone over here. Go back to when you first started for me. Like what was like the biggest personal hurdle for you that, that you had to clear? Like for me, if I had any of my grade school teachers or high school teachers watching this right now, they wouldn't believe that I was the same person because I was petrified to ever ask a question in my <laughs> life. And then it's like, I get into radio and I'm like, why the hell did I do this? I remember like, going, I was like the annoying kid that would like, I answer every question. Can we have somebody read out loud? I was uh, all, I love reading out loud to everybody. No problem. Like, I was definitely that person. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of like obstacles, I guess it's like, God, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, when I think about things that I've like done, I guess like sometimes I just get hit with like some imposter syndrome. So I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Because even when it comes to like interviews, it's not like, like I said, it's like I write stuff down and I do think about it, but I don't have this like, strategic plan that I'm like, oh, I know how to conduct a great interview. Like I, I don't, I don't have this like whittled down craft that I'm like very proud of, but I, I, I guess it's just being able to be a person and have good conversations with people. And I, I can't really put that into words or like draw something out that makes sense of that. Um, but yeah, I, I guess there's times that like, there are times that I'll go to interview somebody. And I'm like, I don't fucking know how to interview any, why am I interviewing this person? Especially when it's outside of wrestling. Like when I had Charles Barkley on, I was like, Oh, what am I going to ask him? What am I going to do? And people are like, you interview people all the time. I'm like, I know, but like, this is a different thing. And now how do I do that? Like, 
there's times that I just like, I question myself or like forget that I am actually a professional at the thing that I do. <laughs> Sometimes I just feel like I've fallen into this thing and I love it, but it wasn't always the like end game that like, this is the thing that I'm doing. I don't know. Does that make sense? No, it, it totally makes sense because like, I'm the exact same way you say imposter syndrome and I'm sitting here going right now, I'm talking to the the person who I think is the best interviewer on the planet and I'm interviewing the best interviewer on the planet. And I'm like, there is no way that I can match up to what she does. What the hell am I doing here right now? There's actually people that I've wanted to have on my show that I have not booked on my show. Cause I'm like, how am I going to ask this person <laughs> something? I'm like avoiding, avoiding, even though I would love to have that conversation. But yeah, I just sometimes like eh, put them on the back burner. We'll get to it. Who are some of those people? If I can ask. Well, one person I would love to have on, you probably don't know who he is, but he's a broadcaster in Canada, George Strombolopoulos. He's fucking awesome. He used to have that a show last on- name four times fast for me. <laughs> I know, right? He's amazing. Um, he's this incredible interviewer, just like cool dude. He was, you know, one of the original much music guys. He has done it all. Um, I, I believe at one point he like left Canada and was working in the US, but he was working like under Anthony Bourdain, doing some stuff uh, under CNN uh, for his production company. So the guy's just like, he's super fascinating. He's so, so good at what he does, but like, he's way cooler than I am. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, how do I ask him questions? He is that interviewer. Like, he's such a badass. Um, I would love to have him on. Uh, Margot Price is a, a country singer that I love. I think she is just so, so cool. And she's got an amazing story. She's somebody that I would really love to have on. She actually has a book coming out. Um, she just posted about it. I think it comes out in October, she was saying. Um, so hopefully around then I will pull the trigger and have her on. Um, who else? Who else is on my list? If it's not usually, it's none of them are wrestling related. I was going to say, at this point, who haven't you spoken to in, in the wrestling yeah, world? At this point? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you could say like the biggest name. I mean, yeah. I mean, unless it was like The Rock, I'd be like, oh, okay. What are you saying to The Rock? I've never, I never worked with, with The Rock. Um, so I don't have like any kind of a relationship with him. So that would be one that would be a bit like, oh shit. Um, but other than that, honestly, like you think of pretty much anyone in wrestling and I at least have like some kind of a relationship with them. So it's a different thing yeah. and not in like a, you know, obviously I respect everything they've done, but when it's something outside of that wrestling world that I'm just genuinely such a fan of that I'm like, oh God, am I going to do this interview? All right. Let's talk about, uh, you know, an interview that you did uh, very, very recently. Um, Anybody who watched your sit down with John uh, realized that it has been an absolutely insane, you know, year for for you guys. Um, I kind of want to give you a a, a proud wife moment here just to kind of, you know, dote upon him a little bit. What has it been like to watch John go from where he was to where he is now? You know, kicking ass in the ring, obviously, but, you know, happy and and healthy, uh, most importantly. Oh, my God. Like, just such a difference and such a journey of getting from point A to point B. And, you know, there's like some pit stops along the way as you're getting to point B. And, you know, just, you know, when we, when he popped on my podcast and we were talking and that night of him checking into rehab, like that really was a moment that was like, oh God, okay, this needs, this does need to happen 100%. Um, And you look at like from that moment on like Halloween night to him checking into rehab that night. And then I don't see him for however long. I have moved to Cincinnati with our daughter by myself, which was like making my head spin like what a moment that I would just like I truly I could feel myself fraying I didn't know what to do and I'm just so not used to feeling like that like I literally was like oh this is what it feels like to have a mental breakdown holy shit oh my god yeah so so to see like to see what he has gone through and to see him on the other side of that and you know, wrestling aside, yeah, he's obviously kicking ass and doing so many amazing things. And physically we can see how good he looks and yeah. like, he just is so sharp. He's having the matches of his dreams. Uh, so, so that side of everything's amazing, but as a husband and as a father to see him in this different light, like literally we're like, 
we put the baby to bed at like 6 30 7 o'clock we put on a show and just like for us to be able to like hang out we have like you know some non-alcoholic beers even or just like you know a la croix whatever it is that we're just hanging out having some snacks watching a show but we're both looking at each other and we're like okay is it time to go to bed now and we, like, we go to bed so early we're up early like it's just it's so different and it's so nice and you know, you look at the side of addiction and like what he had to go through and how difficult that is. And I can only speak from my side of things. I've never felt like that. I don't know what it feels like to feel those things, but to be at his side and see like, not only, yes, you're not drinking, but you've got these horrible night sweats. You're waking up mm -hmm. having horrible nightmares. Um, it's, it's not this like, Oh, go into rehab and come back and everything's great. I'm fixed. This is fine. It's not that it's like this longer, this longer situation. And, you know, you hear people say that all the time, but when you can see somebody and you, I think as soon as John stepped back in the ring, everyone was like, Whoa, look at him. He looks so great that you think he's cured. You think that that's it. Um, and there's definitely more to it than that, obviously. But I mean, yeah, just to see the change in him and to see him physically, mentally, just being there and being a different person is amazing. Like, I'm so happy that he did that. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, um, man, some, uh, e even uh, the thing that I remember was just everybody being so supportive. Like you got CM Punk who, who hopped on to, to the mic on, on, I believe it was an episode of dynamite and, you know, told him how, you know, fucking proud of him he was and all that kind of stuff. And it was, it was so great to see him, uh, you know, come back and be as healthy as he. Because all I can see is obviously from this side of things where I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm watching him, and it has been an absolute blast to, to, to watch him every week. And that, that's me saying that because one of my favorite things about following you on Twitter is mm -hmm. your tweets during his matches, right. Ha has that gotten easier over the years to to watch John's matches? Like, dude's coming off of blood and guts where he's, like, stabbing other guys with forks and broken glass, and everyone's busted open in 10 minutes in an hour-long match. And he's talking about, like, that's him playing golf on a Sunday, which was an incredible line, by the way. That shit's fun for him. Has it gotten yeah. any easier for you to watch? Yes and no. Like, sometimes watching those matches, like, like literally with the blood and the guts, depending on what it is there's times that i'm like oh my god are you okay is can someone check on him like he's bleeding a lot my big thing is like i actually prefer that to crazy bumps it's when i see crazy bumps that i'm like i don't like that that i have a much bigger issue with than than bleeding um and, and generally speaking i don't have to yell at him too much <laughs> <laughs> I, I i do kind of understand see i don't i don't know which one i would prefer because like to be kind of honest i was kind of a pussy in the ring like when when i was training like i always like feigned like i never wanted to get like hit in the face and if i ever got hit in the nose like alone i'm like oh, okay the nose sucks nobody I, likes that i understand that but it's like it was very easy for me to understand that i'm just in here for educational purposes and there's no way that i could actually do this right. i just don't have that kind of mentality <laughs> And I've talked to John before and I've tried to get into that kind of mentality and try to figure it out. And I, I still don't uh, understand it uh, really, to be honest with you. I have, do you, have you been able to kind of tap into that mentality? Yeah. yeah, I think I have. And you know, it's actually funny because that is an episode of my show that I would love to do with John is to talk about death matches exclusively um, just to talk about the psychology that goes into death matches. Cause that's something that he really hangs his hat on is the psychology that goes into matches like that and the art form of that. So listen, it's a thing that he loves. It's a thing that makes him happy. It's a thing that he's, he's pretty good at it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know, for him to walk away from something and, and be really happy with it, that makes me happy is to be able to see him do the things that he wants to do. I mean, yeah, would I love it if he never bled again and I knew that he was never going to get hurt and nothing bad was going to happen? Of course. Right. I would love to bubble wrap the guy and, like, <laughs> keep him locked up up here so nothing bad would ever happen to him. But 
it doesn't work that way. I was going to say, so, so now you're, now you're sounding like Sarah, my wife, but not me with our son, Ray, uh, who <laughs> tends to hit his head like every 10 seconds because yeah. he's climbing on everything. Oh and that's God. another thing. That's Thanks. another thing I love about your Twitter game, by the way, is like the, the Renee mom tweets uh, that, that you put out there, because I think, I think you're just a little bit behind where where we are now i have a almost four-year-old and an almost two-year-old okay. so i read your tweets and i'm immediately going down yeah. memory lane and i'm like i've yeah. been there i've done that and your tweet the other day about like looking into your soul and chucking food on the ground oh literally, my god <laughs> literally like that night my son like cursed me out in whatever baby gibberish that he speaks and then smacked me in the face with an inflatable monkey. And I'm like, how am I not supposed to take that person? I know. And my daughter now, she, as soon as I go, Nora, no, she goes, mm. <laughs> shakes her head at me. No, 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 no. She knows even when she, cause she like, of course, loves to find every outlet in our house. Yep. There's one in particular that she loves. We also live in a very old house. So like things are rickety around here. So she goes up to find them. And as soon as she's near it, she turns around and looks at me and still oh. gives me that. No, she's a little brat. <laughs> yeah. Ray loves to do that with the, the dog bowl, right? With the dog oh, water. Yeah. Loves to play yeah. in the dog. So he'll, he'll hey. walk up to it and we're like, Ray, no. No, and he'll turn about and he'll just shoot us this like hey, I'm gonna do it, and then I dive right in like just head first right into the dang oh, ball. It's so funny, and like the worst part is is like trying not to laugh while they do it is like oh my god! Like even today, like John just got home and she, we're we're working on walking with her, and she kind of bit it, but she like fell into my leg, but I could I, I she her hit her nose on my shin for sure, but the like pause that she took before she started crying. When she starts crying bad, she like gags that she's <laughs> crying so hard. So it was like this pause and I was like, oh shit, it's about to go down. And I'm like trying so hard not to like laugh because it's so over the top that I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, it kills me. These poor little peanuts that are just like, they're into everything. Yeah. And you know, it, it sucks. Cause it's like, you'll spend hours cleaning up and then they'll walk in yeah. and Tornado toddlers just, you know, take yeah. everything down in a, in a few minutes there. Yeah, so backhands, everything chucks it, chucks it. Oh my God. Look, if, if, if Ray can get like my wife's family's height, he'll be a pro athlete because this <laughs> dude can already chuck a ball from like one end of the house to the other. He just does the, and go. And then we'll just like that. drill anybody like right yeah. in the head. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of miraculous that they've, that they've done that. So, you know, Everything being the kind of crazy year that you've been talking about, you know, you moving to, to Cincinnati and that had to kind of throw maybe the expectations around, but, you know, becoming a parent that has reality kind of met the, the expectations or is it just completely different from what you thought it would be? It's, I mean, it's, it's fucking awesome. It is. Like, it's that thing that, I mean, I was definitely not always that woman that was like, I can't wait to be a mom like that. I knew eventually that that time would come and that that like maternal instinct would want to, that that would like kick in. I'm like, okay, I need to have a baby. And then when that did start to happen, I was like, oh, okay, real, this is it. It's happening. I want to have a baby. Um, but you know, when people tell you, oh my God, you love your kid so much. Your kid's so great. Blah, blah, blah. You're like, all right, all right, all right. But like, honestly, I am so obsessed with this kid. She is just, it, they just get better and better and their little personality shine. Like mm -hmm. she's such a happy, funny little baby. Like she's just this like little ray of sunshine. She's so cool, but she also is like a little badass. And she kind of just like, she's rough and tumble. She's finding her humor now. She's found out how to like blow bubbles in the bathtub and she thinks it's the funniest thing feeding the dogs. Yeah. It's being a parent is amazing. It's one of the, it's like, I actually wish that I did it earlier knowing mm. now how much I love it. I'm like, Oh, I wish like, I wish, yeah, I wish I did a little bit sooner. Yeah. No, not, no. I, I think we waited just the right time. Cause I don't think I would have been ready like four or five years ago at that point. Timing is everything. 100%. Yeah. Like I said, I was, it wasn't knocking on my door prior to that. I wasn't like dying, dying, dying to become a mom. 
And then when it did happen, like I was so wrapped up in working, I was so, so busy being on the road, obviously, that it just like it didn't really enter my mind as much. Um, but yeah, timing is everything. I mean, one and thank God, you know, we have a baby. Like here she is. She's yeah. here and she's sleeping downstairs right now. Um, but yeah, it's it it just is so cool seeing seeing your baby have characteristics of of me, of John of our other family members. Like it's so trippy seeing that. Yeah. Like, Oh my God. It's not even like a learned thing. That's just like in your genetic pool. Yeah. Um, who would have thought sticking your tongue out while you're concentrating was a genetic thing? Uh, because <laughs> both of my kids do it and you know, I've been doing it since I was a young kid. I don't know where it came from, but I totally do the Jordan. Like anytime I'm like paying attention to anything. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just seeing them and their little tongue sticking out. I'm like, well, there's no denying them. They are yeah. my, they are my yeah. children at this point. It is so funny. How's uh, how's Cincinnati treating you? Uh, for those who may not know, I've I've lived here my entire life, 34 years in in Cincinnati. How are you liking the the Queen City? So I'm obsessed. I love it right. here. I am a huge fan. I I love it. I love where we are. Um, it's awesome. There's so much stuff to do. Like there, we take our daughter um, to one of the parks all the time. She hits the splash pads. She like rips it up out there. We get mm -hmm. to go to like the market all the time. Um, just to like other stuff that's going on here all the time. Like all the different festivals that are coming through. There's like a big flea market thing that I want to go to this weekend. There's just, there's so much cool stuff going on. Um, it's such a, I want to say like underrated city. It's um, highly underrated. Like we get yeah. no respect from like anybody. Oh, and like, that it's includes beautiful. Like the architecture everywhere is oh, amazing. Yeah. I love all like the, the painted houses, the street art everywhere. It's cool as all hell. Yeah. And I'm, it's like, it's, I'm so happy to hear you say that because obviously I'm biased. Like I was born sure. here. Like, this this sure. is my play. But to hear people kind of say that because Again, like I think Cincinnati gets like so dismissed in yeah, it. Yeah, it does. And, it's and it's even in WWE, like, even in WWE, we haven't had a premium live event here since 2006. Right. Like, can wow. we can we fix that? Like, what the yeah. hell? Yeah, it's they did fast lane. They did fast lane in Cleveland and then Columbus, and I'm like, oh, they're coming here. Nope, they went to fucking Saudi Arabia <laughs> instead. Unbelievable. No, it's funny even because like John never like pumped up Cincinnati to me. Granted, it's been a long time since he lived here. Right. Um, and it was like obviously like way different circumstances than than his circumstances now. We're like, now we live here and everything's beautiful. Also, the city's changed a ton yeah. since he was living here. But I always feel like it's got to be kind of cool to sort of rediscover your city and especially through somebody else's eyes. Like, I would actually love to go to Toronto with somebody that's not been there. And they're like, oh, I want to go check out this, this and this. And like all these things that sometimes you just take for granted because you're so used to seeing them or things that you never even thought to go check out or look into. because. It's just not part of your like daily routine. So it's kind of cool to, to, for me to like take him to go check out other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, I'm happy that you're here because you're Cincinnati's good luck charm. Like, uh, right? You move here and magically, and I mean literally magically, the Bengals not only win their first playoff game since I was like two years old. They go to the Super Bowl. The UC Bearcats wow. make history. First non-Power 5 school to make the college football playoff. We lose Jimmy Wang Yang. We gain Renee Paquette. And all of a sudden, I don't know if those things correlate with one another, but I'm I'm going to choose to believe it. You are. I choose to believe it, too, because I sort of felt like when 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 we were in Vegas and the Golden Knights popped in there, I was like, oh, my God, we have a hockey team. And then like, oh, my God, they're a good hockey team. What? That never it's happens. Like, never happens. Especially like I'm from Toronto. <laughs> of course, that never happens. Um, so I was like so excited that I moved here and the Golden Knights shit the bed. <laughs> they were rotten, had a terrible year. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess I, I'm the Bengals gal now. Yeah, you, you can't leave. Like you no. have to, at least until like Joe Burrow retires, which will hopefully be 15 years down the line. You're not allowed to go anywhere. I'm sorry. Joe Burrow better do my podcast. That's what needs yes. to happen. Yes. I'll, I'll do my best to try to. To try to set that one up. Uh, Please. I've been I've been trying to tweet it out. I'm trying to get the guys. I've not been trying like overly hard. 
Maybe I should actually update that and put that back into the ether again. Um, you know, while we're still kind of in like mellow football time. Yeah. Well, and see, that's the thing is like just a few weeks ago, he said, look, I'm locked in. It's all about football now. And I'm like, dude, the training camp doesn't even start for like a month. He's just a different cat, man. Yeah. Like you got to get him in February or hopefully you can get him on after the Bengals win the Super Bowl be this crazy. season. Right. It would actually be awesome to get like John to interview him. Ooh. No, he's that. I want to do it. <laughs> I was going to say, is John, like, I know John like hates baseball. So he's not like a big Cincinnati Reds fan, I wouldn't assume. But is he really into football? He's actually not really. He's not, there's not really too many. Like, he loves watching UFC. He, he is like in on UFCs and on Bellator. Like, when it comes to like MMA stuff, he is locked in on that far more than anything else. Um, but I mean, yeah, when we were watching the Super Bowl and stuff, he was definitely like, oh my God, wait, this is happening. Like he, he leaned into it big time. But as far as like, you know, watching every week, he doesn't, but I think we should turn that ship around. Cause I've, I also like now to have a football team to like root for coming in here. I'm like, okay, I think it's time that my Canadian American ass means <laughs> into some football. It's time. We we need to get you and John as the ruler rulers of the jungle at some yes. point this year. Yes, I think that needs to happen. Like, Agreed. I'll Agreed. send an email to Emily Parker, media relations person, Let's as soon go. as we're done here. I will try Let's to hook that it. up for you guys. Absolutely, yeah, especially since especially since you're already in town. Uh, obviously, uh, you won't be in town in a couple of weeks. Again, Starcast coming up in Nashville. Uh, how can people, you know, go about? checking out the the sessions when is it going to be you know give us all the all the details there so all episodes of the sessions drop on tuesday and thursday you guys can listen to the sessions anywhere that you listen to podcasts this episode with brian danielson that i'm doing at starcast um that's going to be streamed on fight tv so if you are not in the nashville area if you are in the nashville area go to starcast.com you can get all the tickets there um, but if you are not there, yeah, Fight TV will be streaming it so you can check it all out there. And I'll also, um, I will eventually have all that footage up on my YouTube page as well. Uh, and you're going to be doing some autograph sessions as well. Yeah. 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 Right before I do the, uh, do the interview, I will be hanging out doing a little meet and greet. So come out and see me and come have a little hang. Oh, how's that going to work? Cause the whole time you're going to be doing the autographs, you're going to be <laughs> thinking about the interview. I know. Don't think I haven't already thought about that. I'm like, wait, you guys are giving me 30 minutes between like the interview or the autograph signing ending to uh, to going in to do the interview with Brian, but it's all right. I'll yeah, do my cap ahead of time. All good. Yeah. So I'll get into Thursday and I'll do the, the WWE press junket like Friday morning, but I won't know who anybody's there until like Friday, like Thursday night, probably right. if I'm lucky enough to know who's going to be there okay, ahead of time. A hard subject to change. Yeah, exactly. Like, my gosh, like sidebar here before we get into talking about Ric Flair real quick, because I, I have to ask you about Ric Flair, obviously. Uh, but like the WrestleMania press junket, they actually like sent us out the list of beforehand, but it changed on the drop of a hat. It, it, Charlotte couldn't do it. So all of a sudden, I look out of the left, out of the corner of my eye, and I see bright orange hair raw <laughs> women's championship and i immediately just like go into full-on panic mode because that was my dream interview like that's my yeah. number one dream interview wanted to do that didn't know if it was ever going to happen and now all of a sudden it's like oh shit You're never unprepared yeah i'm like i am kind like i'm kind of prepared because you know you always kind of have those questions but then again, man, in the moment, like a lot, like so much of it just like went out the, yeah. went out the window. She's the like, best though. Like she's just so cool. She's so great. Yeah. Like, uh, fan. I want to do my podcast. I need to get her on. Yeah. I, I kind of broke her too, because like, she loves to do those interviews and kind of like ham it up and, and do the character stuff. So I'm talking to Becky Lynch for like the first, like five minutes of it. Cause you only get like five to six minutes of it. Yeah. But I said if I ever got to talk to her, like I had to I had to thank her because I wouldn't be where I am right now without her. And I, you know, I wanted that opportunity to to tell her that. And immediately when I, I broke into my story and luckily, like I didn't I didn't break like like I thought I would. You could see Becky Lynch melt away and, you know, Rebecca Knox just showed up and she was absolutely the sweetest person in the world. in that whole moment, even though the interview 
I, I'm not happy with it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, but that moment was, uh, was was so incredible. And yeah, she absolutely is the best. And I hope I get like an actual like yeah. sit down, long form, you know, uh, get to prepare uh, a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. kind of moment. But again, that's just kind of like curtain back of how how difficult some of those situations, you know, can be when you're interviewing sure. like 10 people and maybe yeah. you didn't even know you're going to be talking to five of them yeah. uh, that particular yeah. day. Not easy. Want to wrap up with Ric Flair. Uh, a lot of this StarCast weekend is going to be centered around him. When you heard that he was not only going to be there and they're going to do this whole roast of Ric Flair, but he's actually going to be wrestling a match. What was your initial reaction? How how do you feel about uh, about this? Are you going to watch the match? I think I have to watch the match. Absolutely. I don't know if I'll be there in person. It depends. We have our daughter with us out there. Um, so I'm not 100% if I'm going to go or not. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's Rick. It's insane. It's absolute madness, lunacy, craziness. But I also, I see the training videos. I know he's out there doing his thing and he's feeling good and he's looking good. Um, I just, I hope everyone is uh, safe and, and walks away feeling proud of what they've done and that the, the fans all love it. I think it'll be cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to everything that weekend. Renee, thank you so much for being generous uh, with your time. Again, one more time, plug uh, your stuff wherever uh, people can find you, if they don't already, because I'm sure they do. Yeah, make sure to check out the sessions. It drops Tuesdays and Thursdays anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Um, and I, yeah, my special edition of the sessions with Brian Danielson that will be streaming on Fight TV. We're doing that on the 30th, 1230 to 130. Check that stuff all out. Uh, and that'll do it. I mean, you can see right here what my Twitter information is. Yep. And my Instagram's the same. So, yep. And if you're watching right here, you can follow me as well at Rick Uccino. Guys, make sure to hit the thumbs up on this. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're growing every day. And as if you listen to this entire interview, you know how hard it is to to grow an audience uh, from scratch at this point. So, any help, I I greatly greatly appreciate. Renee, thank you again so much. Uh, thank you everybody who tuned in. This is the Believe in Pro Wrestling podcast. Brought to you by Bet Online.